Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Train Valley 2. Uh, this is just a special little one-off video uh, about this game that I love very much because it is currently free on the Epic Game Store and I almost missed it. It's only free for like another day. So if this looks like your kind of thing, you know, I, I strongly recommend you go get it. And thanks to uh, Nick16 characters on the subreddit for pointing this out to me because otherwise I would have missed it entirely. Um, but yeah, I just want to show you what this thing is about while you can go grab it for free because I have put so many hours into it. It's like an embarrassing number of hours. I'm actually going to tab out. Steam, 472 hours is what Steam says. That's believable to me. Um, so let me just show you what, sort of what this thing is. We'll pick a level like pretty early in the main sort of campaign here. Um, I'm not going to go all the way back, but like... The excavation. This this looks fine. Okay, so uh, this is a game about delivering goods. It's sort of an economic route planning game, and it's like all efficiency puzzle stuff all the time. You're gonna know, I think, pretty quickly in here whether this is for you or not. Uh, so you can see each mission has five stars that can be earned. Uh, three stars that can be earned by completing it quickly enough in mission time, and then two other stars that have some kind of, uh, they're connected to some kind of objective that is unique per level. So on this one, we need to earn at least $380,000 and not build any bridges. Uh, obviously on my last playthrough, I did do these things. I'm sure we can do them again. So I'm just gonna pause it here. You see we have the time controls up in the corner. This is what a level looks like. You'll have some number of production facilities, which are asking for certain resources and when delivered all of the types of things they need, we'll turn them into a higher value resource of some kind. And then you have some cities or villages. Cities or villages do two really important things for you. Number one is they constantly produce workers, people who can go and do jobs and basically every production facility is going to require workers. Uh, and secondly, they are the place where your objectives have to be delivered to. So you can see this city down here requires that we give it four uh, carloads of tools, six carloads of coal, and nine carloads of boards. This one up here wants tools and what are these? Steel slabs, okay. Uh, so if we look at the level here, we can see what those things are made out of. Steel slabs are made of coal and iron ore. Tools are made out of boards and steel slabs. So we're gonna be doing a lot of producing this thing. Uh, over here, we have places where we could set up iron and coal mines, but we have to put some, uh, we have to put some cash into them first. And we don't have that much starting money. So let's start building our tracks here. We're gonna be able to issue trains out of any uh, any facility that has a good inside of it. Right now, the cities with the workers in them are, are our only such places. So let's just build ourselves a little track here out to a place that only requires workers out here to the, to the sawmill where we can produce some logs. And you know, we have enough money I think it's okay to just go ahead and build one of these up right now for its proximity to the city. Make this real easy. Okay, we'll start with that. So down in the lower left, you can see our collection of trains uh, for the moment. The trains are color coded. Each color represents a different level. Um, from a lot of experience with the game, I can just tell you uh, these blue trains are the, the level three trains, which means they have uh, three cars behind them. So when we click on these uh, buttons to issue forth workers, they will transport three car loads of workers. And you can see here, it says 3000 above it. Each good has a value, a per car load value uh, that you get paid when it is delivered to a facility. So a thousand, a thousand dollars per car load of workers. There we go. We're, we're making income already. And then as you can see, uh, slowly, the, the resource will be uh, expended, and just don't put too much thought into what that represents, in this case, uh, to produce whatever the higher level thing is. And this is our, this is our basic economic loops. You set up, uh, set up loops of, you know, some place that produces something you get for free, and then you feed it into the, uh, into the economic system and get something else out. And if that sounds like a nightmare, I don't disagree. That's capitalism. That's the that's the cold hard truth of it. Um, so 
we can we can upgrade here we have some logs we have some workers now let's produce boards we need like an awful lot of boards to complete this level so we're just gonna create a little junction here uh, you can see whenever you whenever you tee off a junction like that you get little clickable switches so we're gonna need nine uh nine carloads of boards back to here let's make that our first objective so it is worthwhile to um here i'll send one more one more train of workers over to the iron mine and then we should probably start producing coal uh, so higher level resources, that is resources that consume lower level resources to get built, are generally worth more. You can see these logs are worth 2,000 per carload. Uh, let's get our route to the coal mine built. Oops, I sent that, I sent that out before there were enough people to actually fill it. Well, I'm going to send a train with only one. I, I just want to keep them in threes. I apologize if that seems inefficient or wasteful it kind of is i just it's really important to me that we keep them in threes <laughs> at least for the moment all right so you can see each um your stockpiles of goods build up in the facility and then over time they are con uh, converted into the thing that you're trying to produce each uh, warehouse can hold a stockpile of each of its goods the same size as uh the this right number here uh, so this place can hold up to eight boards at a time and also up to eight workers and also up to eight logs. Um, so you can't just stuff them. You can see our iron ore facility is completely full of resources. Uh, we need to start shipping these back somewhere. So what is going to be the easiest way to get them over to where they need to go? Well, the easiest way would be to build a bridge over this pit, right? However, we're trying to get our stars. We are not interested in doing that. So we're just going to have to build a really long, awkward road. You can see these uh, these slopes inhibit building some. If we were to try to build around here, it doesn't quite work the way we might like. But there is this sneaky little back route through the town that is unfortunately going to require kind of a lot of money to construct. Let's, um... Oh, actually, there's a road that runs along this side of the, the uh, town hall as well. Let's just see. If we snake a road through here relatively efficiently planned okay we can get that done for 16k that's not too bad and while we're waiting for the people in the town hall to regenerate let's just uh go ahead and move a bunch of iron ore over there as soon as this is you have to wait for a train to clear the path before uh before you can issue another train of course so we're gonna need one more load of people here, and then we have our we have our nine carloads of uh, of boards under production. Got enough people that we can put some more work into that. And we're gonna need to connect the coal mine to this city at some point because we have to deliver six ore here. We will get there in just a moment. So our initial concern is getting six steel slabs. You know, I built that um, in a hurry with a real dearth of resources. And I didn't leave a way for the people to get over there because obviously just like there's no way for them to turn tightly enough to get on this track. There's a couple of different ways we could solve that. We could, of course, redesign the track. Doing that is expensive. You are allowed to delete your, your track tiles and you get back half of the money it costs to lay them down. Uh, but another option we have, which is um, cumbersome but functional, is we can just let the trains head out. This is not a thing that you can do quite so easily in the real world. Click on the little flag to stop them, and then once they are fully stopped, just tap reverse, and that process is somewhat more involved uh, in the real world. <laughs> I'm actually going to start moving. Let's let's move some coal over to here. We're going to complete these steel slabs. Okay, so we're delivering higher value goods. Um, which has a lot of implications for our financial situation. So we're going to build a track connecting the coal mine here. Uh, you can see any red tile can be built over, but it has something in it that has to be removed first. 
So you can see it costs us an extra thousand dollars to enter this tile with the with the railroad. We're gonna, for the sake of efficiency, try to do that as little as possible. Uh, if I, I guess we can build through one of them. Yeah, that works fine. Again, we're 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 trying to make money. We need we're going to need a lot of money for our various schemes and things. All right, so we can send out two carloads of people here real quick to get that under control. We'll do the uh, the reverse thing with a carload of people here. That'll get us our first set of goals completed. Uh, now notice we're kind of hitting a little bit of a logistical limit here in that we only have four trains and we're traveling longer and longer stretches of track now. So we're having periods where we don't have any engines um, to issue forth on new jobs. There's a couple of different ways we can solve that. We can buy new engines down here uh, for, for 30k each, uh, or we can upgrade our existing engines. And I think that's what we're going to start doing. So if we press this button, it'll upgrade to the next level. Upgrading a car, a train to the a train's engine to the next level allows it to carry one more carload worth of goods, but it also upgrades the base speed of the engine. So you get a really significant efficiency boost from doing this. Uh, you can see cars four speed 123. If I mouse over this bit, it'll tell you right now speed 98. So it's like a it's like a one third increase in speed and also uh, carrying capacity is a very powerful thing. Uh, yeah, I think we're just gonna we're just gonna upla upgrade all of our trains at this point. We have the uh, the resources, and then we need to start working on these next bits of things. So we're gonna need between these uh, these eight sets of tools, we're gonna need eight units of boards, eight units of steel slabs, and we're also gonna need to port eight carloads of workers over there. And that is all stuff that we are absolutely definitely going to do. So even though we're going to be moving these in like groups of six, it's a little, the, you know, the, the cars are not going to be completely full. Um, it is still an efficiency gain to make sure we upgrade the engines right away because of the speed. All right, we're going to do that reverse trick one more time with these uh, steel slabs. It's a little, it's a little awkward. Okay, but that's enough iron to make all of the steel slabs that we're going to need right there. We are going to need to port a lot more coal as well. And you can see, like, there are times when the game can get a little bit hectic when you have a lot to manage. Remember, we're on a pretty simple level here. Um, but you can always just pause it. You know, it, it ultimately is like a very chill experience. We are definitely going to need more coal. Let's get that going. Um, and the music is very, is very chill, and it's just... It's just a nice puzzle game. It's especially, I find, a really good puzzle game um, owing to the, you know, the, the the quick response of pausing and everything. It's a really nice puzzle game for, like, your second monitor when you're, when you're really focused on something else. Um, but you, like me, have uh, somewhere between severe and extremely severe ADHD, and you just need, you just need a little bit more to be happening so that you can pay attention. Um, many of you know this struggle. I know, I know that you do. Uh, let's wait until this produces its fourth worker, send out the carload of workers we're going to need here, and then we're going to start moving stuff back to uh, back to the steel slabbery. I don't know what you would call a factory where you make steel slabs. Oh, I done goofed. I left the switch in the wrong position. Let's just turn you back around there, friend. Okay, so that is, in theory, enough ore to make the slabs we need. Now notice, if we stop here, you can see this little blue bar indicating how close we are to this objective. We're not actually going to hit that objective by efficiently producing exactly what we need. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to go into surplus um, if we want to hit our all of our objectives, and we're totally gonna worry about that later. Right now, what I am worried about is just getting the stuff we need delivered. Now, if we were going to fix this, that I didn't have to keep doing this reverse thing for deliveries. Um, and we certainly have the money to allow us to do that. It would look something like, um, let's see, we would break this down. We can keep this general idea, but what I want to do is have another switch off over here 
that lets us loop back around. There we go. And now when this hits, when this hits four workers, we'll be able to just leave the switches in the right position, uh, send it off and, and it'll be good. Uh, speaking of switches and sending things off, we probably need to actually connect to the, uh, to the slab factory here because it is time to start delivering goods. Uh, and then this obviously has a pretty straightforward connection. The game can be a tiny bit finicky with the um, the way that tracks interconnect. It's just something you, you learn over time where you need to maybe put like a little kink because you can't have like, this doesn't work, right? You can't turn the track too tightly. Um, like I said, you, you get it pretty quickly through experience. Um, and obviously we could speed this all up a little bit, but that sorta is the opposite of <laughs> what I am generally here to do with this game. I probably will uh, just a little bit for the sake of the viewer. Okay, and when the when the uh, when the tools come back via this route, they can just take the loop. And I know this looks longer than you might want it to be, but unfortunately, it takes it takes uh, about four tile width to actually turn the track around. You can see. So if we want it to be able to loop back on itself. We need a space of about this width. This pit is actually very inconvenient. Who would have thought? All right, let me get this started as soon as possible because slabs are the bottleneck for this factory right now. So we'll just get those rolling and then we'll deliver the people here. And with this carload of workers, we are going to have delivered all of the things that we actually need to finish the level. So now we're on surplus delivery, just trying to make some money so that we can, uh, so that we can hit this goal. Uh, so turning turning lumber into like what you really want to be doing is delivering higher tier goods, right? Because they're more valuable. So uh, we can do that a little bit more efficiently with the wood. All right, get that move in, and then we may as well may as well send this out. So that's another eight thousand toward our goal. Uh, sorry, this train wants to go to the lumber mill. So we get 4,000 for delivering the workers and then another 8,000 for delivering the logs. Uh, it's worth noting, of course, that the tools themselves are valuable. Yeah, we're getting 24 per full train. So how much do we need still? We need like another 90. Okay. That's a pretty significant portion of our overall, uh, overall take there. So this will get where that's going. We have sort of like a weird little bit of leftover material here. I guess we can just throw a couple people on that. And you can see when you deliver goods, it actually does like it upgrades the city, but also sometimes it will affect the environment. Um, I did not pick a level where that where that is shown, but sometimes delivering goods will uh, will cause the city to build extra bridges or to flatten terrain and is a critical part of some of the puzzles. I think we want to just track across here. I think this delivery makes more sense than... Well, you know what? Actually, I am going to send this around the low side because I want this side to be... I want the upper area to be clear for delivering ores and stuff. So we'll just take it easy here for a moment. We're not in a hurry to deliver this because when we deliver this, the level ends and we're not quite where we need to be yet. All right, how much short are we with the 24 factored in and that 8,000 as well? We would be at 69 right now, so I need another 21,000. Eight, 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 and four here would be 20. Okay, so we just need like a delivery of some size down here as well. 
and we certainly have the money to upgrade and buy another train here. Um, this goal is not to have profited a certain amount, it's just to have made a certain amount in raw cash. So if I'm not mistaken, that should be enough money. And we can actually tighten up this route a little bit here. Why not? Right, so it should be less than 28k away from our goal now, and we sure are. In fact, we don't, even, we don't actually even need that load of people I miscounted somewhere. This is good enough. Okay, that's like a pretty simple level. Uh, the game has sort of like, you know, almost electronic style histograms. I love this shit in a puzzle game, uh, just being able to compare our outputs. You can see um, the yellow uh, line is my current score. The, the gray line is what I did the last time I played it, I guess. Um, and apparently that was a very fast game time wise completion. Uh, 1035 beats basically everybody else's score who has ever done this. So take that, everyone. Uh, yeah, that's that's what Train Valley 2 is like. We're going to... Um, they just released their seventh additional level pack. Uh, and I have not finished it yet. So we're going to jump into the level that I am on in that pack. Uh, just to show you how much more complex and also how much weirder it gets. It may seem quite dry, but there are actually a lot of... Um, sort of fantastical elements, and it does it does some fun things. So let's have a look here at Viridian Waters. I am seeing this level for the first time. Uh, the Pandia Project is some kind of multiverse travel. Listen, I'm not gonna try to explain the plot. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is we've landed on some kind of new world. That's the that's the vibe for this whole expansion. Uh, so every level is very different from, from the one uh, previous to it. Okay, so we have 20 minutes of mission time if we want to get all of our stars. Do not allow any trains to arrive at the wrong station. Do not destroy objects with a combined value over $30,000. So we're going to, have to be very careful about removing things that are on the ground, which means that obviously our routing is going to be uh, affected somewhat. So let's just pause this here and first of all, just kind of take it in. We've got this like floating utopian city. Oh, check out their ornithopters. That is so cool. Uh, and there's statues of, of guys holding up orreries or something. And a bunch of, a lot of crashed biplanes. At least a biplane heavy level. Okay, so you can see already we're looking at something quite a lot more complicated. Oh, over here is our, uh, our travel machine, the Pandia Project. This is where we landed, apparently. So... We have three towns, three delivery zones producing people here. They want airplanes and steel plates and spools of copper wire. Is that what these are? Yeah, wire. And polymers, excuse me. You want planes and also crates, which are made of polymers and lumber. You also want green potions. Oh, there's green potion factory right over here. Ah, and we're starting with the lowest level uh, trains, the, the two car trains. So I think the first thing we probably want to do here is just set up a connection to the green potion factory. How are we going to get our green potions over here? Is there a bridge connector? Yeah, okay. So this seems pretty straightforward. Deliver 24. This will this will give us a good some good money output right away. Uh, and then we have another one over here. We have a spot over here where there are just 12 already built trains, or uh, planes rather, which it seems very obvious that we, well, I was gonna say it seems very obvious that we would just deliver these here, but this place has a plane factory that only requires workers, remarkably. I guess it's like, a, it's a salvage depot, right? It's salvaging the planes from the, that's a cool idea. Uh, oh, over here we have a, a sort of an advanced thing, a pass limiter. So after three trains pass through this area, it will shut down for a little while and then eventually it will open back up. And, after, and from then on, every time it opens back up, it will shut down every four trains that pass through it. So I don't really know what to make of that, except that 
wire is made of... Okay, I think I see what they want us to do to start here. Uh, notice we do not have a lot of money to play with in the early going. In fact, we don't even have enough money to connect that. Well, that's fine. Okay, so let's issue forth a couple of very slow two-car trains. <laughs> when those deliver, we'll be able to connect this up and start delivering. Uh, we could deliver... With three passes on the pass limiter, we can get enough airplanes delivered here to um, to fill this up. And I'm sure that two cars worth of airplanes is worth more money than two carloads of workers. Yeah, okay. That's an $18,000 train right there. So that's how we're going to get our early money. Uh, trains can upgrade as high as seven cars, and the uh, the seven car trains, of course, are very fast. I don't know if that'll be the case on this level. With everything on this level having delivery values that are even, I'm assuming that our upgrades it'll it'll let us upgrade from. Well, I was gonna say from two to maybe as high as four or six, but there everything's even, but it's also all divisible by three, so it might stop at level three train or at three car trains. We'll see. We'll see. All right, we can deliver one more car through the pass limiter. Let's do that. Uh, we have enough money to start upgrading our engines. Is that what we want to be doing? So we have an area down here that we could bridge across. It's 42K to bridge. We could build a low bridge for 27 or a high bridge for 42. Interesting. And then this area here has some some bridge ability. Can we actually build all the way down that slope? Oh, actually. So you can see whenever you're in build mode, anywhere that you can that you have a white square is a place you can build. So actually we can just build this is shallow water. We can just build all the way across here. So we can connect our southeast corner and our and our northwest corners. Which is for the moment that seems to be pretty limited utility. Um, notice we have a plant here that, given uh, people and airplanes, will produce for us boards and also steel plates. Um, and if you if a if a place outputs more than one thing, they have these like switchers that you can use to dispatch train loads of different stuff. Uh, but it requires power to operate. So we have a we have a power station up here that runs on some complicated materials. Uh, this is uranium. Where is the machinery? Okay, machinery over here is produced with steel plates. Huh. Okay. <laughs> so we need steel plates. We need power to get our steel plates. And then we need our steel plates to produce machines and or machine tools. And we need the machine tools to produce the power. Is there another way to get power on this map? Oh, there is. Okay, over here we have a power station that we can do with just people and uranium. And I assume, yeah, we can bridge. Okay. All right. I think I, I kind of see what we're doing. It's a little complicated. I, I am going to go ahead and spend the 40k to bump all of our trains up to tier 3s. Because everything's, yeah, everything's at 6 right now, so that shouldn't be disruptive. And we're going to make a ton of money when we deliver these uh, these planes. So it should be easy to maintain that. And you can see here the little timer for the pass limiter creeping around the outside of it. Uh, another, another element of this level that I have noticed here that we should probably be wary of is the Hyperloop. Uh, this thing will connect to another Hyperloop exit somewhere else on the map. This is effectively a train teleporter. So yeah, you can see it's right here. Actually, there's multiple hyper. How does how do these connect? Each one only connects to one other one. So how are we supposed to? Oh, I see. They've given us. There's usually some kind of indicator in the area. So they've given us little flags. This is a blue flag, as is this one over here. Okay. So the the southern ones are connected, and the northern ones are connected, and then this northern one up here is connected to a uh um. Uh, toll station. So every train that's coming through here has to pay $35,000 out of our supply, or else it just gets turned back around. 
uh, which means no machine tools for us for quite some time. Well, actually, this looks like a... Does this just connect? Okay, so once we have some bridge building money, we will be able to access the machine tools area. It'll be a little while before we have the resources to actually make use of it, though, and it requires power itself. What a nightmare. What a nightmare this whole map is. This was either a really good or really bad uh, one to use as, as an example of a later level. All right, let's go ahead and deliver the planes back here. Uh, now that we're on three cars, we're getting $27,000 uh, per train load of plane parts, and that is definitely going to be critically important to continuing to work this. Oh, right, we're supposed to be trying to deliver the, um, the green potion, too. Can I actually build track all the way over there? I just want to make sure. Yeah, there are what, what I have come to think of as routing squares the whole way. So we just build this here. And it'd be like, we want to leave room for this thing to connect. So I'm just, I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually draw a track for like what I'm thinking ahead in case we need to send stuff from either this side or that side through. We do that and then there we go. This allows us to move anything from any of these points to any of the other points. We don't quite have the money then with the visualization to do that. But hold on, this train load of people is going to deliver. And there we go. So I want to make sure that we can, that we build this in such a way that we can deliver people to here as well. So yeah, it's going to be like that. And then also we might want to be able to connect here. I don't know. It's fine for right now. All we really need is a way to get the green potion to that place. Um, but we want 24 of it, so we may as well just keep keep driving people out here. And I guess we want Green Potion over here, too. When the limiter opens up, we're definitely going to want to take advantage of that. All right, for the moment, let's just keep delivering to these places. I guess I should get some of the Green Potion out of here so that we're producing. Right now, this factory is just sitting idle, and that's no good. That's not what efficiency sounds like. So this is going to occupy all of our trains for a minute because there's a lot of distance to cover. Um, but we have a lot of money to work with. Do I maybe want to... Because we could push for upgrades, right? I bet they let us go all the way to six. You can see if there, if there is an upgrade button that it's usable, if they were going to cap us at tier three, there wouldn't be an upgrade in the price here. So they're letting us go at least as high as four. And I'm betting with what we're seeing here, if we can go to four, we can go to six. Given given how many of the deliverables are, are require six of a thing. So that's going to be 15,000 to get to four, 20,000 to get to five, 25,000 to get to six. So it's not cheap to do this. But I think we want to do it with all of our trains probably as quickly as possible. Again, just like efficiency is nice, you know? And look at how much faster that train is. Now we do have to watch out. This creates a little bit of a tricky situation because obviously I want to do six car deliveries here. But the six car trains are fast enough that they are going to catch up to the three car trains. I think, I think they've got enough of a lead that it won't be a problem. But yeah, you can see they're closing that gap pretty quickly, actually. <laughs> okay, so that's 12 more. This is another six. So we'll be, we'll be good in a second here. We know we're going to want at least six more over here. So let's... Oh, right. I need to probably wait a second until we have... Well, I mean, I could just... While we don't quite have the money yet, I could just go ahead and issue two three um three car train loads on this side and we're gonna need more planes i think and also just like delivering people is a way to get money just trying to keep everything running at once uh okay it is worth noting that the limiter is open now so probably what i would like to do at this moment 
is, I mean, first of all, it's going to need, a, this is going to need a load of people, right? And this is the easiest way. Oh, shoot. I should probably remember to build the train track coming out of the, uh... oh, we're out of money. It'll be fine. This is about to deliver. Okay, there we go. Remember to build the train track coming out of there. Okay, there we go. Uh, so yeah, six people through the limiter, six potions through the limiter. Now you have to wait a little bit. These um these hyperloops are cantankerous. If a train tries to enter one before the other side is fully clear, it'll just turn back around, which can sometimes cause some problems. Want to make sure we're not issuing it on the small train. We'll be able to pay the to upgrade that the rest of the way real soon. Um, for now, I guess I'm just gonna let it sit idle, even though I that feels not great. Okay, so we'll be producing here. What's next? What else can we do that's worth money? Well, I guess we can deliver this load of plane parts to uh, to this city, right? That's $54,000 right there. That'll cover the rest of that upgrade. So that's something of value to do. We're going to need a bunch more potion. We know that. So we may as well um, send some more people over here while we're waiting for things to resolve a little bit. Gosh, we need so much stuff. Okay, so we have a bunch of planes over here. I do not yet know what we are doing with them. Okay. So we've done some we've done some work here. We've got our trains upgraded. We have a much more efficient and fast moving uh, fleet. But but for what? To what end is now the question. We can drive planes and people across. I guess this is the next thing, right? We can certainly deliver planes and people across to here, which means we can access uranium. We can access this stuff. We can start producing power. Do these, these connect, right? Yeah, these connect. Okay, so let's start talking about that. Uh, we're just going to build it like, I don't know, it seems pretty straightforward. I'm going to build this in kind of an inefficient sort of right angly way just to make connecting to that upper path easier later because it's obvious that we're going to have to. Oh, there's a little bit of track here, right? I was like, why won't it pull through? But it won't pull through because there's something in the way. Uh, so this is great news. Another place to deliver planes to is a just this is just a, a source of a huge amount of money for us. Okay. That definitely gives us something to do with our trains, and we would absolutely for sure not want to be doing this with the three car trains as slow as their engines move. It would take forever for anybody to get anywhere. We'd just be sitting on our sitting on our hands a lot. So let's start by running over four train loads of people. Actually, maybe that's not smart. Maybe I should be moving trains first, or uh, planes as early as possible. I was thinking, give the plane thing time to finish, and we could fill up uh, this station and that station with workers. But the planes are where all the money is. And if we're going to be moves, if we're going to be doing moves over this distance, we probably do want to be thinking about buying more trains, and we're not going to do that by delivering workers, not solely. Send that over there. Remember, we do lose a star if we allow anything to arrive in a place that can't accept it. Ordinarily, the consequences for doing that are quite low. The train just turns around and heads back out. Although if you're doing this and you're like, you have multiple trains going to the same place, one of them turning around and backing up obviously can be a very bad thing. It can cause a collision like immediately. Um... Notice this city still hasn't gotten to six workers yet. It's producing workers at a much, much slower rate than the other ones around us. Okay, I'm, I'm putting together how we're going to make this work. So we need to get some polymers going. Pardon me, a little bit of a coughing fit there. 
Uh, we need to get some polymers going. And we're going to do that by bridging here. And then bridging here and running stuff along this very long route. Actually, can, can we do that? Can we build around here? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so I guess that's what we're setting up for. And I'm going to spend money on that instead of on a new train. Maybe that's the wrong choice. So we can produce power. Power is good. We need a lot more money. Holy crow, we're going to need so much money. But we do need power for this thing to work. So it is a, it is a proximal concern. Um, actually, we're going to need a ton more workers over here. Also, I need to make sure we build the route for the uranium to get to the power plant. Um, let me get the let me get the train thing stocked up again. Yeah, we're just gonna be running a lot of workers along this uh, along this line for right now. Okay, so that'll do that. I may as well fill this up. I don't know exactly where we're putting our potions in the short term, but we have some idea. Let's just get the rest of these trains running. Okay, so let's see about this route. So it goes something like this. Oh, you actually can't. Oh, that's a problem. So you see, anytime you see like hash marks across a tile, it's sloped. And we can't enter. You can only enter and exit a sloped tile in the direction the hash marks indicate. So I have to... Can I build through this building? I can. We have to pay to remove it, which is very expensive. But it does give us access to the slope. Yeah, geez, that was a $25,000 obstacle. Uh, worth noting, that's 25 of our $30,000. We probably have to be very careful about removing anything else. But it does give us a connection to the, po the polymer factory. And we're just going to need so much stuff. All right, let's just run people out here as fast as we can. So... What do we actually need in terms of polymers? We certainly need six at least for delivery here. And then we also need 12 units of crated goods, which also take polymers. So the 18 uh, resources that this thing can hold, in theory, is enough to finish the level. That's really good to know. All right, so let's produce some more uranium. As soon as that train is off the books, get another one moving. I'm actually just gonna, here, we'll, we'll start the power. So the power plant will consume the resources inside to provide power to everything that is connected to it by rail. So you'll notice it'll light up this building, but it won't light up that building. Um, power does not travel through hyperloops, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, you can see, still unpowered, but this one now has power and will start working. Um, the next three loads of people are just going straight through to the polymer factory, I think. Ah, right, I don't have any trains free. What was it? It was 20,000 to buy a train. It'll come in at the lowest, it comes in at the base level for the scenario. So it'll be a, a two-car train. And then it was like... 15, 20, 25 to upgrade it from to, so that's 40,000, 60,000. Okay, so we don't, we don't have enough money to buy and then fully upgrade a new engine. And at this point, um, building an engine and not upgrading it isn't really helpful because it'll just, uh, we won't be able to use it anyway. We'll have to keep the tracks clear. <laughs> Oh, hey, this is finally built up enough. We could uh, may as well throw some people in here. So this is going in there. Let's get that oil thing hooked up at least. So we got to deliver. Um... Yeah, we have to deliver 18 units of uranium to this place. Let's go ahead and do that now.
Wow, that mine works really fast. Uh, is this enough money? No, we end up just short of the last upgrade. Okay. Well, like I said, we can't really use this thing. There's nothing. There's nowhere where it makes sense for us to move anything in, in a group of five. So I guess we're just waiting a second here. Notice this does not require power. This will just be running all the time. Uh, we are... You know what? It's not a big deal. I just want to get people moving. I decided it was worth it. Um, I'm going to put these six people in the uranium thing. I'm going to put five people into the power plant. And it's like a little inefficient. The numbers will be unwound a little all the time. But also, I do want to get power going as quickly as possible. So we also need to get 18 units of green potion over here. And we can do that through the hyperloop. But not all at once because of the pass limiter. So for right now, let's connect this. If I had been thinking about this, I would have done it earlier. This is a this is a little bit of an error on my part. Okay, let's make sure those don't try to stop in there or there. Uh, definitely send me more people. We're always going to need more people. Okay, you're going in there. All right, what else do we need? Do we still need more green potion? I'm not actually sure, but we can certainly produce it. Let's just go ahead and do that. So all of our trains are running. I'm gonna go ahead and provide some power here so that we can finish up. So you see the amount of time it took to consume. Um, we're gonna send a, another train load of people over here to finish capping this off. Uh, the amount of power that it took to consume, I guess we'll just use this guy for that. But the amount of time it took to consume six uranium and six people was about enough time to get half of this done, like a little bit more. See, so yeah, you two go in there. These two are going into the uranium facility. We have to wait for the pass limiter to reset before we can send over the last bit of green potion, but at least this is running. So wait, the way I get, can we build a, can we just build a bridge here? Yeah, okay. So the way we get the polymer over to here is like this. We have to build another bridge actually. But there we go. This is that route that I wanted to make sure I left space for earlier. Okay, so that connects to there. Um, and we don't have anything else incoming on this route. So as soon as we have six polymer here, we're, uh, we're good to go. You may as well do that. Do we have a need for more planes? We're going to need 12 units of goods. We're already producing the 12 boards that we need for that. I do need to start sending goods over there. That's a process that's going to be limited by the pass limiter, right? Yeah, all the ways we have of getting these boards out of here are our pass limited routes. Okay, that's a little annoying, but it's fine. So this thing is going to be is going to be a bottleneck for sure. Um, we are definitely thinking about this. I'm gonna go ahead and construct it because I want to start loading it up. We can deliver people to it without using the pass limiter. Need to, we need to build a route to it though. I can't quite see what I'm doing. Okay. Ah, this thing allows us to beat the pass limiter. If we send the boards through here, we can skip the pass limiter at a cost of $35,000 per train load that we, that we scoot past the limiter. That makes sense to me. Okay. So we have enough train or we have enough planes to deliver another load of planes. 
Uh, this I, di I didn't explain this, but probably this gate is pretty obvious. It does not allow boards through for whatever reason. Um, that's fine. They will come through a different way. So I'm going to go ahead and deliver these planes. I don't think we're actually going to need to take them apart, but we can get a bunch of money for delivering them. And obviously that is a high value in the situation that we're in. So let's get these communicated. We'll send people over with them. Again, just places where you can... Getting to jam people into... Uh, getting to jam resources into facilities that will accept them is how you make money. Send this as well. Although we may end up having to pause it because I don't think we quite have the money to make that train work yet. Well, you know what? This will land before it gets there. So we'll be fine. And we're still kind of not able to do everything we want to do all the time. Even with five trains, we might want to go up to six. Uh, being able to deliver multiple loads of high-value goods like planes is very, very helpful. So we only ever need to get 12 units across to this. But we're going to have to use this power station to run it. Because we can't, we can't draw power from over here. Because the map is, this part of the map is completely divided off from that part of the map. It's a cunning design. So we need six units of oil, but only ever six. We're going to have to build, we're going to have to build from this too. Oof. This is a very complicated level actually. Okay. So we know we're going to need to do this at some point. I'm having, ah, yes, I'm having trouble because there's a, there's a slope there. All right. And I think we're, we're going to have to move machines through here at some point. Yeah, actually, maybe we can't afford to build any more trains. We're going to be like very desperate for resources. Okay. But we can do some other delivery here. All right, getting that across will be good. Let's talk about the boards and the steel, um, the steel plates. Because as soon as we get this stuff empty, as soon as there is room to produce these again, the workers here will start breaking down the planes and thus creating more room for planes. And that is like our primary income on this level, it seems. Uh, speaking of which, let's get more planes in production. So the pass limiter is about to come off. We can just go ahead and move some things through the pass limiter. I definitely want to get this other unit of green potion through. But I don't, that's not as high a priority. I think the main thing we want to move through the pass limiter right now is the two units of boards. And then the planes will come through later. Or the, uh, the potion will come through later. So let's get those running because it is just about to open. This needs to get its other thing going. So our plan here for these is they run like this. Come through here. Long, long, long path. <clears throat> okay. It would be ideal to... Actually, I'm just going to move... I'm going to move six of the polymers as well. We can't move all of the polymers because I do need to get the... Um, I do need to get the potions through so that we can start building the other polymers. But this will be worth doing. And in fact, I guess we can move the other unit of polymers um, that's just going to this town. Now I'm going to want to do some manual stopping here, some hand breaking. These just want to move across here and do not need to wait for the other things. So let's go ahead and issue these. These we can just move across the lower track because the gate doesn't care about them. Okay. 
So over here, I'm going to briefly... Oh, well, actually, maybe not. Hold on. Can I pause that? Okay. I'm going to briefly pause all these just to give this time to get actually clear through the, uh, the thing. Okay, you're just going this way. Actually, you can just go now. So yeah, you want to deliver directly to there. Just making sure everything's clear and that I'm not creating a collision here. Okay, you are also headed through. And as soon as one of those disappears, we can fire this. I mean, a little cagey with that. We can maybe afford that sixth, sixth train. I'm just nervous. Wait, is that... I screwed up. That's a that's a dead star because I I in my head I was delivering things to this um, to this station, but that's not right. This is supposed to go up the hill to the. Okay, that's fine. I will I will. I'm a little neurotic about that if I'm honest, and I will complete this correctly with all of the stars later. Let's just go ahead and finish the level for right now. I'm not going to make y'all sit through me. Uh, starting this over from the beginning especially not when we're this far into the episode so sorry you're supposed to go up the hill to there you should join and as soon as this connection is clear we're gonna run um we're gonna run people up to here and, and get this uh, this breakdown started okay so all of that's good that's important Let's run the last thing through the limiter to shut it again for for a moment here. We are also going to need to send people up there. And another another load of people to start the power plant. Okay, that'll get this running. Oh, right. Before we start the power plant, we want to make sure we deliver the uh, the wire because otherwise they're not going to be building anything over there. Um, so I guess I should run another load of people over to people and planes over to the wire uh, production facility. Okay. All right, that's all important. That's all doing stuff and good for us. Uh, so now we're gonna need to get this load of, I could definitely afford to build. Yeah, building that train was fine. I, I could have done that earlier. Just look at how long it's taking for all the traffic to occur now. All right, so I'm gonna move. I guess I'm gonna move. My plan is to move this unit of polymers through the pit, through the toll um, thing from this side, and this unit of potion through the toll thing from the other side. We still have plenty of money for this; shouldn't be a problem. But you are gonna to have to wait here because I need this thing to actually come through, and then we gotta figure this situation out. And this is this is a horrible nightmare. Ooh, actually, I might want to re-cut this section of the track. This is really awkward. I didn't realize that the um, the connector on this was going to be on the bottom side. How would I make this work better? All right, let me uh, delete, 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 delete. Let's try giving it a little bit more room to breathe. That way we can... Mm, this is still tricky. Yeah, it needs a little bit more space. I think, actually... I think this will work. 
because it can connect to here. It needs ah the the way everything slopes is really awkward. Because I want to be able to deliver stuff through the hyperloop and then directly down to here, and that's um, very challenging to do with how the lack of tightness in the in the line turning. We might just have to do some reversal stuff with it. It's very inconvenient. It's annoying, it's tedious to do, but it might be the only way. Uh, nope, I did not have the switches configured correctly over here. You need to go that way. So, yeah. Let's get this through here. We're gonna wanna produce another 12 units of wire. Let me send another group of people to the power plant. Actually, let me send a bunch of people over there. We're going to need people for the plant and people for... Oh, I had the switches wrong again. Oh, God. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Very nearly disastrous. I am doing a wonderful job. It's I lost my star, and now I'm like all flabbergasted and doing terribly. All right, so these two are headed to um, help mine the uranium. Although honestly, this looks more like um, this doesn't look so much like like gathering uranium as it does uh, like the way Spice looked in the old the, the Dune Two RTS. First RTS I ever played in my life, and it was on a Sega Genesis, which obviously is the ideal platform. <laughs> I can't think of any machine that it would be better to play an RTS on. Okay. So first things first, send this through there. We got to get this to the wire place. Then I'm going to send this unit of people up the track here a little bit. We're not actually going to start the power again until we have the wire in place. Turn you around, you are headed back down the line to here. You are similarly headed to that place. And then we need to deliver... Um... Oh, the limiter's open. Uh, is the limiter faster for what we're doing here? Because we need to deliver uranium... And I, we want to do this now. If I, do, if I use the limiter... I guess so. I don't think it matters very much. I think it, it looks to me like it's probably about the same. So as soon as the wire is in here, we'll repower this side. I think we're probably solid on money. We probably don't need to worry about delivering things for cash anymore. Uh, okay, so now it's all about that efficiency. We do need to do another another six units of machinery after that. So I guess I should be thinking about that as well. We need to, we need to end up making probably 12 units of machine tools. Enough to fire this thing twice to finish all the crates, and then also six to deliver here. So, that's going to require six more units of wire, which means let's move this out this way. And actually, we're going to need another six units of wire after that, just because there's a six unit wire deliverable. Well, this thing can only hold six units of anything at a time anyway, so there's no sense in getting too concerned about it. Okay, so here are the rest of the ingredients for that wire. Oh, stop you before you accidentally go to the wrong place. Because I actually need you to go back here to this power station. Okay. We don't need more oil, right? This is, yeah, that's enough. That's enough oil forever. Okay, so we have all that coming in. 
then we're going to produce even more wire. So now that now that that is ready, we can set up the power here. I get the switches configured wrong absolutely everywhere. Well, let's let the train of people get past and then turn this around. Okay, this is producing actually actually six units of power might be all it takes to finish this. So the uh, the machine tools that we're making right here might be our deliverable. Well, that's cool. That's handy if it turns out to be the case. So what else do we need? We're making the 12 units of crates right now. We need 12 units of planes delivered here. That's easy enough. In fact, it's looking like I can just send these train uh, these uh these planes right here. So I guess I don't need to actually do this. Yeah, so we'll send these planes, and then the six planes that are being made right now are going into the wire thing to deliver the wire. Oh, wait, except it's not time to do that yet. Shoot. Little little spacey there. Uh, you have to deliver the oil before that's uncovered. So I've created a little bit of a problem for myself. It's fine. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just... Let these go past the oil branch, and we'll uh, we'll deal with it that way. And yeah, I appreciate that that you only have to do that once. That's actually really nice. All right, you can just wait right here for a second while I correct my error. Okay, so what else do we need to be doing right this moment? I need to be delivering these planes to produce the six wire that we're gonna need for this spot. We can start running the crates, that's fine. And then I got my other units of tools already, cool. Uh, this can get started now. Get that out of there. So we may as well just send these through the um, through the slow thing. Oh, what am I doing? I'll tell you what I'm doing. Causing all kinds of trouble for myself because I can't I can't see that switch, so I didn't realize it was wrong. See, this is actually going to be a little bit of an issue. Okay, get these past the switch, correct it, turn them around. I'm not paying too much attention to where this thing's going because um, because we've already delivered stuff to the wrong place once, so I'm not uh, not as vigilant as I might otherwise be. Here, what we can do is this. I will intentionally let this deliver to the wrong place. And that'll get it out of the way for a second so that the crates can get where they need to go. Nope. Wait, don't do that. I was gonna let it just go in here, but we don't have the uh don't have the switches configured for that. Okay. So that'll reveal this need. Uh this is almost done, and that means we are almost done. Yeah, that's a little bit more authentic of a of an experience in terms of like figuring things out. Obviously, that last level, I pretty clearly knew what to do from the moment we were going. But sometimes it takes a little bit of experimentation. I very often will like play a level through like this, you know, screw it up, not get it done fast enough or whatever. And then now that I have like the plan, I dial in and try to do it, you know, faster and tighter. What's the more efficient version of this thing? Four stars. Uh, if you don't get your five stars, then it doesn't compare your scores against other players because obviously um, you're playing under a different set of constraints than they are. It wouldn't be a, a much of a meaningful comparison. So sadly, we do not get uh, histograms on that one. But that's a later game level of, uh, of Train Valley 2. Something a little bit more complex. This game is really cool. It is free on Epic. It is only $15. It's full price on Steam, but that is only $15 for the base 50 levels. And then if you like it, you can you can pick up 
more stuff. It's like these packs are like five or six dollars each and every single one of them is massively worthwhile. It also has quite an active workshop. There's lots and lots and lots of levels uh, to find on here. I have played I've played many of these um, very active community. It's just cool. It's just it's just a really great game that I love very much and I feel like I never hear people talk about it. So I wanted to spread the word a little bit. Uh, that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, we'll be you know back to our regular schedule, the things, the things that I generally do here. Um, and we'll see you then.